They're very generous. The children are very are very sweet. It gives you a very good feeling. Who remembers what kind of plants we have here? You have rose. Which one's the rose? It is a total um, walk of faith because again, I don't know what I'm doing. It's really like nice to see like everyone being happy, especially because it's Christmas. Fraser Focus, a fresh perspective beyond the bridge. Hey guys, welcome to Fraser Focus, local faces and local places. I'm Leah Bolton. And I'm Dean Atwal. And with the holiday season fast approaching, the theme of this week's episode is festivities and uplifting moments. That's right. One of the stories we do is the outdoor learning classroom, as well a community Christmas dinner, both local schools. We also head to a local farm here where criminals and victims are healing together. But to wrap up the show, it's up, up and away with the Abbotsford Flying Club. And to start off the show, some friendly competition between Dean and I, the Salvation bit. Army, we head to those red kettles. I think people will always associate the Salvation Army with our kettles and ringing the bells. Merry Christmas. Thanks. At any given time in one night, we can have about 97 guests. Wow. So whether it's from the transitional housing program, the relief shelter, and our permanent shelter as well. And then we also have, uh, from time to time, a 10-bed uh, emergency weather response. Thank you very much. You're so welcome, and God Thank bless you. you. Yeah. Colleen, so, is this your first year reading the bell? No, so I was here last year, too. Oh, were you? Yeah. yeah. What do you enjoy the most about it? I like seeing the little kids come up and put yeah. their little money in. I like yeah. that, too. It's perfect. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Merry Christmas. So we're gonna try and uh, FaceTime Dean here. We can't get Dean, I think he's busy making money. Sometimes you shake it like that. I usually do it just on there, but... Uh, Cause it sounds simple enough, yeah, but I'm yeah. sure. Or you, so. you have to go to college for it. These are volunteers that work here with you. Yes, uh, dedicated volunteers. We actually have about 3,000 shifts that we need to fill. Uh, currently, many, many spaces are open, but we have dedicated volunteers like the one at this location where these, uh, this, these gentlemen come back. They've come back every year, and I want to say probably this is at least the fifth year they've done this for us. Okay, we're doubling down here. We're tripling down here. I can't keep up. I don't know where to point the camera. Donations are rolling in. Over here, there's a couple over here. There's more. Well, it's amazing how uh, a lot of people who uh, are kind of on the receiving end, or close to it, are uh, donate donors that uh, seem to come by every year and they uh, put the money in and whatnot. And there are, are the ones who uh, are a little more affluent and they, they come too. Whoa. He's going for it. Thank you for donating. Why, why is it important to help people? Why should we help people? Uh, it's helping, it's, it's poor people, but this is very good for his, uh, his like, for his, uh, future is good. Can you reach? Can you reach? Reach it. Gonna go for the go for the slam dunk. <laughs> and in it goes. I haven't had a lot of guys come up. They've all been females. I bet Leah's getting all the guys. There we go. We got someone here. Hey, thank you. Five more bucks for the Colin Leah Joy TV yeah. slash Salvation Army so we slash. Got, we're gonna put five in too, so that's ten. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing all right. Yeah. Okay, give me those bells back. All right. I believe in karma yeah. because I, I really believe what you give, you get back. That's true. Yeah. I believe that 100%. Hello. Hello, how are you today? Happy today, I got a free buggy. Why do you donate? Because I like I don't like seeing people going hungry in the world. Hey! How's it going in your location? Well, so far, Colin and I have made like a million dollars over here for the Kettle Campaign. <laughs> She's made a million dollars, guys. A million dollars over there. We've made two. Two million? I think they're lying. They're very generous. The, the, the children are very, are very sweet. It gives you a very good feeling. It gives me a very good feeling. Hello. Thank you for donating. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And what, why, why donate to the Red Kettle? Every time I come in the store, so I just keep donating. How many times a week are you shopping here? At least three times a week. You're donating three times a week to the Red Kettle. That must get expensive. About five dollars. This time it was four. About five dollars a throw usually. It, people, people need to get a hand sometimes. How are we doing now? There's a lock on this thing. I can't yeah. even break in. 
Yeah. Oh, here we go. There's money. Thank you. Thank you. They have to fill out that little envelope that's in here and put it in here, and then we just write credit card on it. So we can do it by credit card, donations by credit card, and we can give receipts as well. Yes, yes. Uh, receipts over twenty dollars, and uh, they can also give checks and put them in the bucket, and we'll give them a receipt as well. Well, let's get back at it. Okay. Well, I can't, we're gonna try. Do you see the money in there? You see the million? It's coming in. Donations are coming in. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So after all that hard work with the kettles, looks like I did the best. No, that's questionable, but tis the season to give. You're watching Fraser Focus. More local stories when we come back. Who can name one of the medicines? Caitlin. Um, sage. Hey guys, welcome back to Fraser Focus, local faces and local places. Right now I'm in Alder Grove at North Otter Elementary School where they've created a new outdoor classroom. Otter is a spirit of play and curiosity. I thought, well, that is just absolutely perfect for what we want in our garden, because we want the kids to play, which they love doing. Also, we need to respect all forms of nature, whether they're plants or animals. And, you know, we've all heard that it takes a community to raise a child, but it takes a community to support a school. And what I see is a great community that surrounds this school with love and with uh, a lot of dedication. Canada and Tree Canada have decided to partner together to create a program that would allow the schools to have this amazing outdoor classroom. We're making soup. Tree Canada was interested in a school that was interested in outdoor education um, and who were committed to using indigenous plants. Who remembers what kind of plants we have here? You have rose. Which one's the rose? Uh, do you remember what we use the rose for? Tea. Why do you like gardens? I just like growing plants and food and stuff. Rather than buying it at the grocery store? Yes. Are you going to plant anything? Uh -huh. Yeah! Lots of plants over there. Lots of plants. Yeah. What kind of plants? Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Probably no. trees. Trees? Trees. Well, we already have the crab apple. Uh, flowers. Are, are you going to grow food? Well, there's a number of kinds of berries here, yeah. and that's. A, and then we are going to, in our planter boxes, plant some foods, yes. Oh. And this area here, that forms a circle, so that's our Aboriginal circle. This is a medicine wheel. There's how many parts to the wheel? So four medicines. Who can name one of the medicines? Caitlin. Um, it's an interpretive forest, and so the children can balance and go, go between um, the upright logs. It's all made out of 100% natural yellow cedar. How do you know they're going to have fun on these, Dave? Do you the, test them out at your own place? Absolutely we do. So you've got, you've got your balance and agility. Uh, working, you're very good at this, by the way. Whoa, geez, I need some balance, right? <laughs> Cameras. Oh. <laughs> Those benches are movable. Okay. So we can pick them up and put them anywhere in the garden. And we are fundraising some more because those those are expensive but we want to put another table here with six more benches as you come up this valley and you see the you know the development throughout the valley i mean we need to we really need to protect those green areas and, and you know in a small it's it sounds like a small way but if you have a whole bunch of people doing this it actually turns into a big thing if we don't have that here the children don't have that connection simple bear go so that's the kind of pushing base back up that's the kind of berry that we can eat actually I, we thought it was pretty awesome and yeah, I, I really like this is so cool it's amazing I thought it was really fun I liked it 
Oh, yeah. Any other questions? Students can start to strengthen their connection to the natural world with this unique classroom. We'll be right back here on Fraser Focus in a moment. You hear about why they committed the crimes that they did, and it's usually under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Welcome back to Fraser Focus. Ex-cons and survivors of crime usually don't spend a lot of time together, but here at a 3.2 hectare farm in Mission, not only are they here to work, but to heal. This is the first positive thing that I've really found that I could get behind. My son was murdered in 1981 by Clifford Olson. And I spent the next 30 years trying to find something positive out of what happened. And uh, I was just so full of anger, though. For 30 years, I could get anywhere. Restorative justice is really about offenders and the community working toward helping victims heal. The, the farm is named after Reverend Emma Smiley from Victoria in 19. 83, I believe it was. Uh, she was murdered in 1978 uh, in an armed robbery. I, I ended up shooting a man and he died. I went to jail and uh, she used to come and visit me in jail. And when I got out of jail, she used to, to um, take me to lunch. And we used to sit there talking. And one of her ideas, <laughs> I used to think she was crazy, was that we should get a farm and uh, help youth. I had to put aside a lot of prejudices because I was totally anti-offender for forever, right? But then, fortunately, Olson died in September 2011, and uh, that was a big change in my life. It is a total um, walk of faith because, again, I don't know what I'm doing but I believe God will give me the direction, and he has. You can see the results. Uh, farmers come here and tell us that they can't believe the difference we've made here in just the time we've been here. I've never done time before. If you're not around people like that, you don't really have um, the perspective on it. And now when you work right next to the offenders? I, I can see, see, originally, I was painting everybody with the same brush. They were all Clifford Olson, and they're not. Um, some, uh, some these guys here, they're genuinely sorry for what they've done. Uh, people that come here uh, from prison are here working some days, and people drop in. We give free vegetables to any victim of homicide, and uh, lots of them come and get vegetables. I think one of the things that I like about being here is that you hear people's stories and you hear about why they committed, you know, the crimes that they did and it's usually under the influence of drugs and alcohol. We have offenders coming from two different prisons right now, um, which we hope to expand on. There is a spiritual significance here, not only for healing, I mean, just where we're situated, we're right across from a cemetery. You can see on the hill there. The abbey. The abbey as the well. The sisters in St. Clair. The nuns, are, the nuns are over the side there, the sisters. Yeah. Reverend Smiley couldn't have picked a better spot for a farm. It was, it was very fortuitous. The sale from the produce here support survivors of crime. You're watching Fraser Focus. More local stories when we come back. Abbotsford's a great place to be. It opens up British Columbia. It's kind of the gateway to the rest of the province. Focus local faces and local places. This is our holiday edition. I'm here in Surrey at Tamanawa Secondary School where the kids are working hard to prepare for a Christmas community dinner. 
Tonight is our 19th annual uh, Christmas community dinner. Uh, we will be serving over 300 members of the community. They'll have a visit with Santa. Uh, they get a full turkey dinner, gifts, crafts. Uh, the band will play, the choir will sing. Okay, okay, girls, so make sure that you don't put the snowflakes up too high. What are you looking forward to most tonight? Seeing the smiles on those little kids when they meet Santa Claus. Well, when like they receive the gifts, when they, it's cool, right? Yeah. yeah, it's really like nice to see like everyone being happy, especially because it's Christmas. Like we put a lot of work into this, and we just want to see um, the smiles on the kids' faces mm -hmm. when they see all of it. Okay, so unfold the tables, girls. Make sure that you. Uh, Put them in the back, the long rectangular table. Pardon? How do you unfold them? Well, that's a good question. So un open this up. OK, make sure it's locked here. See, that's the lock. And then we open these legs up like this. And then just make sure that's locked down there. Good to go. Culinary students cook the food and um, other students help with the setup and the leadership students go out and get donations from the community. Like we went around, collected donations from a lot of stores and a lot of companies and stuff. So I feel like it's really nice to see all the, I feel like it's gonna be really nice to see all the kids and see how all our hard work really paid off. There's gonna be desserts like Sundays for the children. There's gonna be turkey for everybody and everyone's gonna have a good time. We're in the kitchen with some of the chefs. They, they make all of the food for the dinner. Right? All the food. You guys make all the food, right? Yeah. How much food is there? Uh, there's about 100 people can easily eat. Yeah, there's a lot of food. Can you handle that much? Uh, yeah. Our chef gives us proper training. Okay. And uh, we have the confidence to handle that much amount of food. Is it like Hell's Kitchen in here? Sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> no. This is our 300 portions of stuffing and turkey that we're going to be doing tonight. And our potatoes are behind it. This is our tower of potatoes, which we will be mashing. Um, we go to Options, the charity, and they invite people to come. Okay, so you guys don't have to go out and find they you know, we have some people like regulars who come here like every year mm -hmm. and so we invite them as well over 300 people will be enjoying christmas dinner this evening in the meantime stay with us here on fraser focus we're going to head over to abbotsford to the flying club welcome to the abbotsford flying club how many members does this uh, flying club have we have around uh, 100 members right now currently 100 members yep and how's that grown or has it declined over the years um it stays right around 100 but right now we're actively seeking people that uh, enjoy aviation or would like to get involved with flying aircraft i don't think i've ever been on a small plane but i've been on a bigger plane quite a few times actually you zach what about you small plane uh only once ever on from montreal to quebec <laughs> Excellent. Just at the right amount. So, we're good. Good. Okay. All right. That completes my walk around. We're good to go, guys. This club has a rich history here in Abbotsford. Absolutely. Uh, the club was founded in 1962 by seven uh, World War II veterans and friends, and they wanted a flying club. We still promote uh, aviation within the Abbotsford community to this day. Zach, have you ever pulled a plane before? No. First time uh, for everything. Believe it or not. <laughs> First time for everything. Just, we're going to bring it this way. Beauty. It's easier to fly them than it is to, to push them around. So. Come on in, Zach. Go right. Carbine hot. And we bring it to 
suicidal. There's our GPS here. We're in Abbotsford Airport. Right. Uh, red means we're going to hit it, so we're on the ground. Okay. There's George, and we're going to go through. It's called a run-up. We're going to take off at a speed of uh, 78 knots. That's okay. our best climb rate. We rotate at 55 knots, and then uh, we're aiming for here for our takeoff speed. Every summer we run uh, kids first program. flights for kids. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's a fantastic way for kids to get out and get to try flying. We are in the air. So here's the Ruskin Dam project off our right hand uh, wind tip here. Actually, uh, last weekend I took uh, for my birthday. My girlfriend and a couple of her friends, uh, we went flying to Victoria for the day. So uh, it may not be rich, but we do things that uh, rich people do. Lots of um, lots of the older pilots, they tell fantastic stories. You know, the fact is some of these people were some of the first aviators. So why are they in Abbotsford now? Well, I mean, Abbotsford's a great place to be. Um, it opens up. British Columbia, it's kind of the gateway to the rest of the province. Uh, you can zip into Vancouver real easily if you need a big city experience, but it's also kind of nice and quiet. You see a lot of the, the buildings and the whole bunch of farmland. So it'd be, it'd be pretty cool to be a pilot, right? It'd be amazing to be a pilot. Airport in Abbotsford is growing and expanding. We're certainly hearing of more and more people using those facilities. And that about wraps up this edition of Fraser Focus, bringing you local stories from the Fraser region. If you guys have a story to tell, don't forget to contact us. You can send us an email, give us a call, or there's always social media, Joy TV BC. I'm Leah Bolton. And I'm Dean Atwell. Thanks for watching.